Good morning, everyone. So uh, we'll continue with the topic of beats, where we were last week. And uh, before we start, uh, before I proceed with beats, we'll quickly recap the relevant topics from this chapter. Okay, we started this ch chapter with traveling wave. Let's try and recall traveling wave on a string. So what you see, if there's a string here, and uh, there's a tension T in the string, and this is how the tension is acting. And this at team time, time t is equal to zero, this string, entire string is at a state of rest. There's some tension in the string. If this is the point where force is acting, if we make we uh, give transverse motion to one particular point, what happens? That's the traveling wave. So at one point in the string, if any motion is created, typically we talk of what kind of motion? We talk about SHF motion. So if we make this point, oscillate as if SHM motion, what happens in the string? That is the chapter. So if this point, so what we do, suppose we take this point here, we take it down and then again, we give one full oscillation and time period of oscillation is T. So this point is oscillated for a time period of T, amplitude is A. This is how the string will look like after whole oscillation at this point is completed. At, at time t is equal to capital T, which is the time period, the string will have, will have this kind of shape. So what has happened here? So whatever motion has been given to a particular point on the source, it has transferred as this point moves, it makes the adjacent point move. And then adjacent point, whatever, when this point moves, it makes next point to move. So similar way, whatever motion we give to a particle, it keeps transferring to the adjoining particle with some time delay. So that's what, the, uh, and that's what the equation we write here. Why this is the equation. And this equation is based on this fact that oscillation is transferred to adjoining particle with some small time lag. It is something similar to like passing the parcel. And so it will keep moving. So whatever is there will keep getting next, next, next. So here in place of parcel, what gets transferred is a displacement or disturbance. So phase changes, in this case, what will happen as it gets transferred, there's a time delay. So there's a phase also will lag. So what we say here, and since the rate at which displacement gets transferred is constant, hence the phase changes linearly with distance from the source. That's why the equation is like this. The phase of any particular point, which is undergoing oscillation because of source, it varies linearly as the distance from the source. And in this equation, what does the angular frequency depend on? Angular frequency is same as angular frequency of oscillation at source. It depends only on the source. What we talk about, what is the understanding of wavelength? If we look at one particle, this particle has different motion, this particle has different motion, this particle has different motion. But if we continue this motion, what we'll find here, this point and this particular point on the string, they will always have the exactly the same motion. At all instances of time, they will have the same motion. The reason they have the same motion, because their phase here, the phase is zero. The phase will keep changing. It will keep lagging. This point will lag by phase of 2 pi. So change of phase of 2 pi is equal to change of phase of zero. So this point and this point will have exactly the same oscillation. And that's what we call as wavelength. Wavelength is distance between two points, which have phase difference of 2 pi, so that they have identical motion. So another way of defining the wavelength is minimum distance between two points which have identical motion in case of planar wave. And we, from that, we come to this expression in the k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Okay. So two particles with a separation of lambda will have identical motion at all times for a planar wave. Okay. What is planar wave? Planar wave where amplitude, uh, amplitude remains constant. Energy is not radiated in different directions. In that case, amplitude also remains same, phase also remains same. Any two point, if the uh, oscillation is set in the start string over a period of time, all points which are at a distance of, uh, uh, if any two points we take, uh, this, I'll come to that later. Okay. So if I take one point here, and I take another point which is a distance of lambda, these two points which are at a distance of lambda apart, they will always have same motion which means that the two points phase difference remains constant. Here at this instance, phase difference is two pi or zero. At all instances, it will remain two pi or zero. So this is what the string would look like at time t is equal to t. So by the time it has completed one full oscillation, one wavelength has been created in a string or disturbance has traveled a distance equal to lambda. In one time period t, 
it has traveled a distance lambda that itself gives you wave velocity. So the lambda is the distance by t, lambda by t becomes the speed at which the disturbance travels on the string, which is wave velocity. Another way to understand also uh, this wave, so two particles will have identical motion. Another way to understand, so this is how it look like at 5t, 5t there'll be five such waves created. At 5t plus delta t, a little time later, this is how the string will look like. So when we look at uh, the solid line and the dashed line, it gives the impression as if the entire waveform has shifted towards right. Has the particle moved? No. Actually, the waveform has moved towards right by some distance delta x. And if even this, this particular thing has moved by delta x, this also is moved by delta x. Any two points, if we choose, which are at the same phase, would have moved by distance delta x. So uh, if we focus on the crest, the crest from here, it has moved a distance. It has moved by this, so much distance here. If you can find this distance delta x, delta x by delta t is nothing but wave velocity. And that's how we talk the motion of a crest. So when we see, when we see this waveform, it will appear as if the crest is moving towards right. It will appear crest is moving and any other particle also. And what is crest motion? Crest motion is crest is a point having a phase of pi by two. So the, when the crest moves, we can always also say in terms of phase, position of point with the phase of pi by two has moved from here to here. So what is moving? So wave velocity, we use a better term called wave velocity also called phase velocity or phase speed. And uh, how do we calculate phase speed? Whatever phase term is there, uh, rate of change of that term is equal to zero. We find the speed at which the phase travels or passing the parcel kind of thing moves, the parcel travels. And in case of the string, wave velocity is root by mu. Okay. Let's uh, con uh, continue in terms of energy terms. See, all these particles undergo such a motion. In case of string, all will have same value of A, same value of omega. So if you have to calculate energy per unit volume, in case of SHM, I'm calculating average energy. In case of SHM also, we'll apply similar principle as SHM. Energy per unit, and per there also average energy is equal to maximum kinetic energy or maximum potential energy. So here we'll take average energy is equal to maximum kinetic energy. What is maximum kinetic energy is equal to one by two into mass into Vm square. What is the mass since we are taking per unit volume, we'll take the mass of unit volume, which is density. Hence energy per unit volume is very easy to arrive at. It is one by two rho Vm square. And what is the maximum velocity in case of uh, SHM oscillation? Omega A. So this becomes my expression per unit volume. And again, I will not discuss more detail. What is intensity? Intensity is contained energy contained in volume is equal to speed of wave V. So we uh, multiply energy per unit volume with wave speed. That becomes intensity, energy in volume V. Okay. Another way to understand and to understand the power of the source, let's think of this. See, see what has happened here during this period of time. If I take a cross section right next to the power source, see this part, some energy has moved from this cross section. Some energy has crossed this cross section. And this energy, where has the energy gone? This energy is contained in this wave shape of length lambda. So how much energy has passed through this cross section in time t? Energy which has passed through this cross section which is perpendicular to the string direction in time t, which is one oscillation, is equal to energy contained in waveform of length lambda. So what is power of the source? What is the energy it has imparted in time t? It has imparted energy to waveform of length lambda. So energy in length lambda, that's the energy it has imparted. In how much time? In one time capital T, time period. So energy given divided by time is the power of the source. What is energy in length lambda? So we write this term here. We know energy per unit length. Energy per unit length is one by two mu omega square A square. If we write energy in length lambda, we'll multiply this term by lambda and divide by T. Lambda by T is nothing but wave velocity. So that's the power of the source. Power of the source to make this oscillation continue, this source has to supply an average power equal to this term. This is the average power required from the source. In case of longitudinal wave, if uh, this is uh, what we see here, 
uh, we see in the pink color, these are the air molecules enclosed within a tube. And in case, in this case, how if wave travels along the length of the tube, particle motion also is in the same direction. So whenever if wave passes through the air molecules inside the tube, the air molecules will oscillate in this fashion. Their oscillation will be along this length. And let's take if this is x is equal to zero, and there are two cross section x1 and x2. So in this case, uh, again, uh, unlike transverse wave, here oscillation is along the direction of motion of wave, and it's called a longitudinal wave. And uh, we write the wave equation. We don't write y to differentiate their two uh, two values along x direction. So position terms we define in terms of x, and displacement term is defined in terms of s. Both are in the same direction. To differentiate between the two, we use s term here. s is equal to s naught sine omega t minus kx. What does it mean here? All particles in the tube will oscillate with angular frequency omega, and their amplitude of oscillation will be s naught. <clears throat> but when the different particles oscillate, this particle is oscillating. Here also, this particle also will oscillate. This particle will oscillate. But they will not be; their motion will not be identical. They may not be in the phase together. Okay, so uh, they will undergo SHM, but maybe difference in phase. Phase will change with x. And here also, the other term what is relevant here? What is the speed at which the wave travels? We came to expression gamma r t by m, which is also could have been written as uh, b by rho. This is bulk modulus. So here also again to understand this point. So if this is a medium particle x1 and this medium particle x2, at any instance of time, we can find out what is the displacement if I, at any particular time, t0. If I have to find what is the displacement of particle x1, I have to substitute x1 here, I'll get s1. Similarly, if I substitute x2, I'll get s2. Let's try and understand what does s1 and s2 indicate. s1 and s2 indicate displacement of the particle at x1 from the mean position. So S indicates displacement from the mean position. So medium particle at x1 as well as x2 will oscillate about their mean position with angular frequency omega and amplitude S0, though the phase may differ. Since the phase differ, the if phase is different, these terms are different, hence according S also will be different. The phase may differ and difference in phase depends on delta x, distance between the two. They will have unequal displacement at a particular instance of time. And let's see what happens because of unequal displacement. So let's mark this has a displacement of X1. I'm assuming it to be positive. And this one, which is from here, the position X2, all particles which were at X2, mean position X2. At this particular position, their particular time, they have moved to uh, X2 points, they have moved to S2. So this is displacement. So what has happened here? Earlier, all the uh, air molecules which were present between X2 and X1, now the spacing between them has changed. This earlier, the spacing was delta X. Now the gap is delta X plus delta S. What is delta S? S2 minus S1. So what has happened? Uh, cross section remaining same. If uh, two positions undergo unequal displacement, the volume also changes and which gives rise to volumetric strain. So original volume was cross-section area into delta X. Now increase in volume is delta S into A. So that's it, increase delta V. What is increase in volume here, or change in volume is delta S into area of cross-section. And what was the original volume? Original volume was equal to delta X, X2 minus X1 into A. Hence we arrive at the volumetric strain. Volumetric strain is ds by dx. And based on that, we arrive this expression, what we call as pressure wave. DP indicates a variation of pressure from the mean pressure. And we use the bulk modulus property. And we arrive at this expression. This is how the pressure will vary, how the pressure wave will move. And what we understand here, uh, we have seen this earlier also, the point where displacement is zero, pressure variation is maximum. And then we also arrived at a term called intensity. We have written the intensity terms in terms of pressure. So this was the expression in terms of intensity, in terms of pressure, pressure amplitude. P naught is the pressure amplitude. This is maximum variation from the mean pressure and density, and this is wave velocity. And in case of sound wave, we use a log scale to indicate intensity, and that scale is called decibel level. 
and decibel level is a logarithmic scale and this is the expression what we use i naught is the threshold intensity which is 10 to power minus 12 watt per meter square and what we understand from here See, whenever intensity doubles, then suppose if, uh, we take uh, if uh, a particular point when the intensity doubles, decibel level will increase by three. It comes from the property log of log to the base ten of two is equal to point three multiplied by ten it becomes three. So when intensity becomes double, uh, decibel level for whatever initial value was it will increase by three. So these are some of the important points, and then we came to standing wave. Standing waves went to identical waves moving in the opposite direction. So they were traveling in the opposite direction. At this particular instant, they have come like this. So which area where overlap is happening? This is the area where two waves are overlapping. And if you look at this instance, if you have to find out what is the displacement of each particle, we take the sum of the two displacement with sign and we find displacement at this instance is zero. So based on this, and uh, we continue a little more later from here, and this wave has moved further small distance here. And this wave also has moved further small distance. So after some more time, this wave, this is shape of the wave. And if I plot, this is the region where the standing wave is forming. This is the region where waves have overlapped. This part is still not overlapped. And if I plot the shape of wave, I take the sum of these two. What else is both are in the same direction, the wave shape will come like this. This wave shape will be like this. So just to understand and we continue for the little time later, again, it will become flat and we can continue drawing. So this is the area where the standing wave is forming. And one more. Here also, if you have to plot, this is where standing waves are forming. This is where, this is the region where overlap is happening between two waves. At this particular point, red is zero. So resultant displacement is same as blue color. Here, uh, blue is zero, the resultant is this only. At this point, it will be sum of these two. So resultant wave will look something like this. The peak will occur here. It will have this kind of shape. Okay, so we can draw this one. And uh, so we can draw this overlapping shape. And so this also, it will go like this, it will make like this. Something like this. So why taking the sum of displacement due to each wave, we can draw the resultant wave. Drawing this wave is a little tough. We can easily write in terms of mathematical expression. And standing wave forms because of two equal waves of equal amplitude, equal omega, traveling in the opposite direction. And up, uh, when this happened here, important point to note, see this point here, this point here, the displacement is always zero. So there are when standing wave form, there are certain particles which always remain at rest. And those particles call, are called nodes. And uh, so this kind of pattern form. And uh, we have done something with standing wave on a fixed string. Fixed string when the two waves overlap. And see, these are two fixed points. So in case of fixed string, we arrive at this equation based on two boundary conditions. What are the boundary conditions we have used? If at x is equal to 0, the displacement has to be always be 0. And x is equal to L, the other end of the string also, displacement must always remain 0. Applying those two conditions, we arrive at, and writing those equations, we arrive at a standing wave equation. And what we understand from standing wave equation, this is like SHM equation. This is like your sine or omega t term here. This gives you angular frequency of oscillation. But what we understand here, amplitude is not constant. Amplitude keeps changing with x here. Amplitude will keep changing with as the position changes. Amplitude will, sorry, this is x term. Amplitude will change as substituted k is equal to l. Amplitude keeps changing with x here. That's an important point to understand in case of standing wave. So if this is the string position at a particular instance of time, just pay attention how the string will move. Let's see how it will move at different instances of time. And try and understand what is this motion indicate. This is how the string will move, oscillate. And if we focus our attention on uh, this particular particle here. So this particular particle also is always moving along this line. So if this particle is undergoing a such a motion of this amplitude. So this particular particle compared to other particle, it has maximum amplitude. And let's take another particle here also. If this has amplitude A here, this doesn't have the same amplitude. But when this particle on the string is at positive extreme, 
Even this particle also is at the positive extreme. Phase of this is pi by two. Phase of this also is pi by two. All particles on the string are in the same phase. Unlike traveling wave, phase is not changing. So any all points between two nodes will oscillate with they will always in the same phase. But what is the difference here? Amplitude is not same. This point is oscillating with smaller amplitude. As we go nearer to the node, even smaller amplitude is smaller amplitude, and this point will have zero amplitude. So in a standing wave, all particles oscillate. It's not a traveling wave. Waveform doesn't appear to be moving as was happening in case of traveling wave. In case of traveling wave, and the waveform appears to be moving, which is not the case here. All particles oscillate, and the amplitude of oscillation varies with x. That's what this term indicates. And only certain. So when it oscillates here, there is some omega term here. What is the omega term? Any oscillation will have omega term. This omega is same as omega of the wave which has overlapped or which have, which you may call as constituent wave. Two waves have formed. Overlapping of two waves has formed a standing wave traveling in the opposite direction. Each wave have each wave had some value of omega. So whatever omega the each wave had, this particle's angular frequency of oscillation will be same as omega of individual wave. What will the amplitude? Amplitude will be this maximum amplitude will be sum of the amplitude of two waves, which will be equal to two a. That's another thing we know. And when we write this expression, is there any velocity term associated here? What is velocity here? Is there any velocity associated? Just pay attention here. So this is a string. This is a string has some value of mu. This has value of some value of t. So whenever t and mu are fixed, there is a particular speed at which the disturbance travel. So even though waves are not traveling, it appears it is this is a standing wave. Waves are not traveling, but this pattern has been created by two waves which are still traveling in the string in the opposite direction. And what are the speed at which two waves are traveling? This speed is wave traveling the speed of root t by mu. So this is standing wave pattern, which is not traveling. Is created by two waves which are traveling in the opposite direction, and these waves will have speed. A speed at which the disturbance is transferred along the string, and that speed of wave is depends on root of t by mu. So we have uh, we should understand what is the omega term here and what is the velocity term. Where does the velocity term comes here? Two ways we need to understand. This velocity term depends on the string properties, which is tension and mu. And this velocity, same velocity, if uh, a st st uh, standing wave, sorry, if traveling wave is created, this velocity wave is standing, uh, sorry, traveling wave will uh, travel at this speed v here, which is equal to root t by mu. Okay. Similar, so, uh, so this when it oscillates, so what would happen? Just assume that if this string is oscillating, will it create any kind of sound? If it is oscillating, it will make the surrounding air particles also oscillate. So when the string, like a guitar string or whatever string, when it is oscillating with angular frequency omega, it will make the air molecules also oscillate and it will create a sound wave, sound wave which we can hear. So it will create a sound and uh, it will make, the string is oscillating with angular frequency omega. It will make air molecules also oscillate with same angular frequency omega. And hence, we'll hear a sound of frequency of same frequency as frequency of oscillation of the string. Okay. And uh, if uh, amplitude is large, the sound will be large. If amplitude is small, the sound will be faint. Because the sound, loudness of sound depends on intensity and intensity varies as square of amplitude. So when these oscillations are large here, amplitude is large, loud sound, and if it is small, faint sound. So when we try to oscillate and, okay, so, so again, that's one point. Second thing we can, another thing we can understand also, suppose there's a string here. Can we make this string oscillate by bringing up, in this case, what has happened? One case we had talked about, the string is oscillated. It makes the air molecules oscillate. What would happen, suppose the string is at rest, we bring a tuning fork near to the string. What will happen if we bring a tuning fork? What would tuning fork do? Tuning fork will make air molecules oscillate with same frequency of the frequency of tuning fork. 
And now what is happening? Reverse is happening. This air molecules will try to make the string also oscillate. What will happen in some cases, if we use different frequency or tuning fork, some cases I may see this oscillation will be large and some cases oscillation will be small. So I have one frequency, this leads to large oscillation. There's another tuning fork, if I replace with other tuning fork, it does not lead to large oscillation. This is only small oscillation. Why, could, why is this tuning fork leading to small oscillation? Why is this tuning fork causing large oscillation? Tejas, can you think or tell me reason why this is happening? Yes, sir, because the large one is uh, equivalent to the fundamental frequency of the standing wave, right? So, no, it is yeah. not necessarily fundamental. It has no, but, to be equal to any of the natural, uh, natural harmonics. Frequency, yes, sir. That's what natural harmonics mean. Yes. So we are understand. I hope this is understood. The natural harmonics, if we try to oscillate the string at any other frequency, it doesn't meet the boundary condition and it doesn't lead to constructive interference. And this leads to loss of energy. Energy is lost and oscillations are small. So we understand there's a reason because of the boundary condition, it can have large oscillation only at certain frequencies. It will have large oscillation only when the boundary conditions are met. What are the boundary condition? Boundary condition, condition is equal to L is equal to N lambda by two. So this length has to be multiple, multiple of half wavelength. And let's try and understand what does the wavelength mean. See, any particular string, if we take V, speed of wave is equal to root of T by mu. And unless we change the tension of the mu for string remaining same, speed remains same. Speed is equal to F lambda. So what we understand here, since this product of these two remains constant, if for different frequency of oscillation, if we double the frequency, wavelength will change. So what has happened? The combination only certain wavelengths are possible for large oscillation. Hence, it means only certain frequencies are possible at which it will display large oscillation. And this is a condition. L is equal to N lambda by two. The one oscillation I've shown is like this. It is oscillating like this. And this is, super, this is one type of oscillation, but that's not the only way the boundary conditions can be met. Boundary condition can be met in other way also. That's what is shown in the second figure. Second figure, there's another way it can be made to oscillate. How will oscillate? Let's see this one. This will oscillate like this. Just think, see that? Is this clear how it is oscillating? In this case also, what we find, boundary conditions are met. If the strings are oscillating, what we understand in this case here, all this particular instance, let's take this particular instance here. How is the shape of the string? The shape of the string is like this. So all this particle with this also node and this point also is node, because this point also is not moved. We have taken one, two, three, four, five different instances of oscillation. This point has on the string has not moved. Other points are moved. So this also is a node. This also is a node. And this also is a node. And node to node, and we see the wave shape, total length is lambda. This is lambda by two. So, and this is the length of the string. So what we notice here, L is equal to two lambda by two. Here L is equal to lambda by two. Here it is equal to L is equal to two lambda by two. And what we understand all particles, these are at the phase of plus pi by two. And all these particles on the right part, right loop, they are all phase, they, what is the phase of all these particles? All are at phase of minus pi by two. They are in the opposite phase. So all particles between, between the two nodes oscillate in same phase. But when they oscillate, again, as we seen earlier, depending on the position, amplitude of oscillation vary. There are certain position where amplitude is maximum. And what this position where amplitude is maximum, that's called antinode. So node, antinode, node, antinode, node. Always in the standing wave, we'll have successive node and anti-node formation. And the distance between node and anti-node will always be equal to lambda by four. So this is something that I hope you understand significance of this. So what has happened, just try and understand here. So if I have brought a FIP, uh, this is something, uh, this is to, uh, uh, this one mode, this is second mode, and let's understand here. This mode is called fundamental mode. 
is also called first harmonic. This n value is one, L is equal to lambda by two. The length of the string is equal to lambda by two. And this is something here, this corresponds to minimum frequency. When frequency is minimum, wavelength is longest. The minimum frequency at which a particular string can be made to oscillate and form a standing wave is called fundamental frequency, first harmonic, longest wavelength. And what is this called? This one is called second harmonic. And you can easily notice what has happened here. See, this is something here, the wavelength has become half. How the wavelength has become half? V has remained same. If wavelength has become half, frequency has become double. So this frequency, when its particles are oscillating, here also all parts in the string, every single particle in the string is oscillating. Here it was oscillating frequency f naught. Here it is oscillating. So if it comes out the frequency f naught, the frequency is 2 f naught. What does it mean? Here, by the time it completes one full oscillation, this string would have completed two oscillations. This oscillation twice the frequency. And uh, this is called second harmonic, n is equal to 2, is called first overtone. Okay. And this is the equation in terms of frequency. This is the equation we use. What is uh, frequency? Uh, what is called natural harmonics or natural frequencies? F is equal to n v by 2L. This is the formula we have to keep in mind. F is equal to n v by 2L. And v can also be written in different forms. Okay. Coming to uh, this is what in case of uh, string. I will take open, not open pipe. Open pipe is very similar to perfect string. Let's take a case of closed pipe. Whenever they use word open pipe, open pipe means pipe which has uh, uh, both ends are open. Closed end basically means one end is closed, other end is open. Unless they uh, especially mention both ends closed. So closed pipe means one end open, one end closed. And uh, open pipe means both ends are open. So if we have a pipe, so there are some air molecules which are outside in the atmosphere. There are air molecules which are confined within the pipe. So in a sense, these air molecules have different condition, condition compared to air molecules outside. So here also, if I bring a tuning fork, place a tuning fork like this, make the tuning fork oscillate. This tuning fork, if the oscillated frequency of F, it will make the air molecules also oscillate with frequency of F. And similarly, it will travel in the radial direction. It may make all the air molecules within the, within the tube also oscillate with the particular frequency. But at that particular frequency, constructive interference may or may not happen. Only if constructive interference happen, all these air molecules start oscillating with large amplitude. They will oscillate with this frequency f. But whether amplitude becomes large or not depends on whether constructive interference is happening, whether the boundary conditions are met or not. So when, if we oscillate, it will lead to large sound. When does large sound mean? When, when would you hear a large sound? We'll hear a large sound when amplitude of oscillation of air molecules within the pipe also is large. If amplitude is large, intensity is large, and decibel level is also large. When would that happen? When boundary conditions are met. And those boundary conditions are met only at certain frequencies. And so what are the boundary conditions here? Let's try and understand again. So this is open end, this is a closed end. What are the boundary conditions? As all air molecules oscillate as a part of standing wave, the ones at the closed end will always be at rest. So there are air molecules here. This air molecules are not free to oscillate. Because this, as it tries to move, this boundary prevents its oscillation. When we compare, this is one extreme end and this other air molecule here, which is here, this has no obstruction. This can freely oscillate. So what is the boundary condition in between particles may oscillate? This weather. But as we see in the standing wave, they will oscillate, but they will have different amplitude. Only important condition is not easy to prove. Well, only important condition is whatever amplitude of oscillation the particle near the open end has, no other particle can have larger amplitude. So this particle will have the largest amplitude of oscillation for, for any pipe. Or other way, say it's in, because it is the most free particle. And if it has the largest amplitude of oscillation, this point must be an antinode. So what are the boundary condition? Open end forms an anti-node for displacement, closed end forms a node. 
And based on that condition, we again uh, write that equation and arrive at mathematical equation. The amplitude of oscillation of molecules at open end will be greatest. And uh, what would wavelength depend on? Of course, wavelength, how would you calculate what is the wavelength here? It will form some wavelength. So it will, when a standing wave also has a wavelength, how would you figure out wavelength? How would you figure out lambda here? And with the lambda comes from this v is equal to f lambda. What is v here? v is the speed at which the wave travels in the air medium. So v can be calculated, v is known, v is for the air medium. If uh, we use a particular frequency, corresponding to frequency, there is always a lambda value. So uh, for a given medium, if uh, air molecules are oscillating with particular frequency, there is corresponding lambda, which can be calculated v is equal to f lambda. And that lambda have, have a relationship with the length of the tube. So frequency, length, and lambda are related. Then only construct, then only standing wave forms, then only resonance takes place. Okay. So what is the condition for resonance? So only certain tuning force of particular frequency will lead to large sound. What does large sound imply? Large sound implies high intensity. High intensity implies large amplitude of oscillation. And large amplitude oscillation happens because of constructive interference, which happens when the boundary conditions are met. So what are the boundary conditions? What is the condition we arrive at based on boundary condition? Here, boundary condition, this is the equation for boundary condition. Minimum is 2n plus 1 lambda by 4, n value 0, 1, 2, 4. So that has to be relationship between the lambda and L. Then only boundary conditions are met. In terms of frequency, earlier case was n v by 2L. This is 2n plus 1 v by 4L, and n being the overtone. So in this case, if I draw, uh, in this case, only odd harmonics exist. There, this term is always an odd number. So only odd harmonics exist means uh, uh, if a fundamental frequency is f naught, next higher frequency will not be 2f naught, next higher frequency will be 3f naught, and next higher will be 5f naught. This is first overtone, this is second overtone. And between two successive frequencies, the gap will be equal to twice the fundamental frequency. Only odd harmonics exist. And uh, this is how, uh, this is something, let's try and understand what does this figure mean. Is, what is this equal to? Uh, what if in terms of length, in terms of this, if we show something like this, it means this indicates amplitude of oscillation of particle at the open end. This indicates amplitude of oscillation of particle at the closed end is zero. At any other point here, what does this figure indicate? At this point, the particle which is at this point, will have this amplitude of oscillation. Particle at this point will have this amplitude of oscillation, but oscillation, is it happening like this? No, oscillation is happening like this. So this particle will oscillate with this amplitude here like this. This particle will oscillate with a smaller amplitude. And this particle will even a smaller amplitude. And this particle will oscillate with largest amplitude. And this one is equal to, uh, from here to here, this is node and this is anti-node. And this land, in this particular case, this is equal to lambda by 4. So I hope you understand what does this kind of figure indicate? What is, what is the frequency of the pipe? What is resonance? Why do we hear large sound? And all those things should be understood. Let's take a simple case here just to make us a, a organ pipe is slightly a little more difficult for people to understand. Let's take a simple case when the speed of sound a normal 340 meter per second. And uh, length of the pipe, okay, sorry, I didn't say I mistype. Length, let's say the length of the closed pipe is 50 centimeter. What is the length of pipe? We have take a closed pipe of 50 centimeter. So this is easily we can obtain a closed pipe. If nothing else, you can fold a, a sheet of paper and uh, make a kind of cylinder one and close it. And what we do here, and air paper, you know, we if we place vibrating tuning fork of gradually increasing frequency, starting from low value. So what we do is start with something like 10 frequency, 12, 13, 15, whether be every frequency we keep on trying. So one by one, we bring different tuning forks of different frequency, gradually increasing frequency. What we'll find, we'll find first time we'll hear a large sound only when the frequency is 170. At 170 frequency, that's the lowest possible because we have started from zero. So anything up to 170, there was no resonance. So what does the 170 indicates is the lowest frequency at which the resonance takes place. What is the lowest frequency called? This is the fundamental frequency. 
So what is happening at this stage, at this stage, what will happen? And if you look at this particular case, what will happen if we can observe different air molecules, we would have seen all molecules oscillating at the frequency of 170, but this molecule will oscillate with larger amplitude. This will be smaller and smaller. What would happen at something like 160 frequency? 160 frequency also particles will oscillate 160, but uh, the amplitude of oscillation will not be large and anti-node will form, not form here. Node has to form here, anti-node cannot form here. It will form a, some odd pattern, which will not lead to constructive interference. So only at this is smallest frequency, I hope this you understand here. So, uh, so what is happening as we gradually increasing frequency? So when we start with very low frequency, wavelength was very large. So what are you doing? We are gradually decreasing, decreasing when wavelength very large. We are decreasing the wavelength. So when we use a frequency of 170, the wavelength becomes equal to two meter. When wavelength becomes equal to two meter, then one fourth of wavelength matches with this L and resonance takes place. So this is fundamental frequency. And again, if we keep increasing, increasing, keep increasing, second resonance will occur at three into 170. In between also, if we bring this up, uh, tuning for here, it will make the air molecules oscillate, but uh, the amplitude of oscillation will not be large, boundary condition will not be met, and that is not the state of resonance. Okay. For the next resonance will be uh, this frequency, and this is called first overtone or third harmonic. And a similar kind of thing. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's see here. When I see three different shapes here, when we look at this pipe, we should be able to identify all cases L is same. In this case, what is the, uh, which mode of uh, vibration here? Only one node, one anti-node is forming. L is equal, this length is equal to lambda by four. We should be able to spot this length is equal to lambda by four. Here, this is equal to lambda by four. And this one is equal to lambda by two. Similarly to third, third one, if I took, this one is equal to lambda by four. This is equal to lambda by two. And this also is equal to lambda by two. So what is this one? This is fundamental mode of vibration. This is uh, third harmonic. And this is the fifth harmonic. Wavelength is progressively becoming small, small. So this kind of wavelength, how do we create this kind of wavelength? So whatever frequency we have here, when I make the frequency triple, when the frequency is to become triple, the wavelength has shrunk to one third the length. Wavelength has shrunk to one third of the length. When you make the frequency five times, wavelength becomes one fifth. So there are different frequencies. If we keep a frequency F naught here, this is three F naught, and this kind of vibration will take place. So this is kind of figure. We should have to start understanding what are these kind of figures indicate. Okay. This equation we found. We have something like a resonance tube. Resonance tube is here, what is in this case, what is being done here? Here, wavelength is changing because we are changing frequency. There's another way to deal with, this is a typical setup we had discussed earlier. It is used to find out this called resonance tube. This is used to find out speed of sound in air. In this case, what we do, we keep the tuning fork constant. If we do not change the tuning fork, it means frequency is not changing. It means wavelength is not changing. What are we changing? We are changing the length of the tube. How do we change the length of the tube? By changing the length of the, changing the water level here. So this is something when the water level is higher. So this is something here. A previous example, I gave example of frequency of tuning fork gradually increased. In this case, uh, frequency is remained constant. The length of the tube is gradually increased, keeping the wavelength constant. So first here, this it will vibrate like this. Second, this will be the fundamental mode. It will vibrate like this. The fundamental mode here, F is constant. So what is changing here? In this case, F is constant, L is changing. As N changes, L changes. When we substitute N is equal to one here, this becomes three times, L also has become three times. So these are two things which are changing in case of resonance tube. We alter the length L, as we increase the length L, 
the harmonic number also will change the smallest first more uh, uh, first resonance in fundamental mode then second resonance first overtone the length here l2 should become equal to three times the frequency if there's no end correction uh, when n become when n was zero this term was one when s equal to one this becomes three the numerator becomes three times the l also has become l should become three times that's what happens this is how it looks like in case of resonance tube and we can easily solve this questions so if the length of the pipe is changed by lowering the water level and using tuning for a fixed frequency. Fixed frequency implies what? Fixed wavelength. The resonance will occur when the length of pipe is equal to what? One fourth, three fourth, five fourth of the wavelength. That's what the equation means. L is equal to, we are using this is the equation. That's what the meaning of this equation is. Now we come to the topic of beats. What is beats about? Beats are two waves or uh, two sound waves with slight difference in frequency. So but in a given time, if frequencies are different, both will not have equal number of oscillations. So let's see, this is something we see two different frequency. And uh, this, uh, if we plot this is y and this dimension is t. Okay, see so uh, before I go to beats, I hope all of you understand. See, it's all of you heard piano. And piano, we press one key, we get a different sound. If we press the adjacent key, we get slightly different sound. And our ear can sit, understand also. Why the sound sounds different? Is it because of the loudness or it is because of frequency? The sound sounds different because of frequency. Our ear and our mind can differentiate different frequencies. Okay. And we can our hear, we can hear frequency, minimum frequency, what you can hear is 20 hertz. And highest frequency, what you can hear is 20 kilohertz. Different frequencies. Frequency is number of oscillations completed in a second. So here, if we, this oscillation created, we understand from here to here, this what is this time interval is equal to, this time interval is equal to time period, and time period is one by frequency. So this time, this is equal to this the frequency of the first one. And similar way, if I calculate this the frequency of the second one. And this is so, so when we have oscillation, uh, between two successive crests, the time interval between two successive crests is the time period. Inverse of that is frequency. So based on the graph, you can understand what the frequency is. Two of them do not have the same frequency. Fine. So when we have two of this shape, if we have enough time at each point, we can plot the sum of these two waves. And if we plot the sum of the two waves, the resultant shape becomes like this. Like we can easily understand also resultant shape is like this. Why is this maximum here? What I point this point, both reach the peak at the same time. They get added up here. If I draw any other line here, here this peak doesn't coincide with the peak here. That's why the empty, this is, is this is smaller. Here, what we notice this uh, peak here, per positive amplitude uh, coincides with negative amplitude. They're out of phase. So here, this point here, amplitude becomes zero. So this is some of these two. If it is plotted, it becomes shaped like this. What is important to understand here, this dimension is amplitude. This dimension indicates amplitude, intensity, and loudness. And this interval indicates frequency pitch of the sound. Higher pitch means higher frequency. So when I look at this curve here, what I find here, if I examine here, this distance between successive peaks, these are constant. These are constant. From here to here, we can actually plot. We find these are constant. It means that the frequency of the sound is constant. What is varying? Loudness is varying. And it is varying in a periodic way. Any way, which anything which varies, loudness is varying in a periodic way, it will have a time period and a frequency. So what is the frequency it has? And mathematically, you can find out if uh, this has frequency f1 and this has a frequency f2. This frequency is average of the two frequency. That's the most important result of the beats, what you need to keep in mind. So let's again look at two most important characteristics of sound are pitch, which is frequency, and the loudness, which is intensity and amplitude. The resultant of two sound waves are nearly equally free, equal frequency, f1 and f2. The frequency, what is heard here, is average of the two. And amplitude varies with the frequency equal to difference in frequency. So if I say f1 minus f2 is uh, 4 hertz, 
it means the loudness will go up and down four times we'll hear the large sound four times in a second it is wow 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 kind of sound it is like if you have a knob if you keep rotating the knob up and down of maximum zero maximum zero maximum zero if you can do four times in a second kind of sound uh, uh, that siren will create is beeps here intensity or loudness of sound varies with the frequency equal to difference in two frequencies which are causing beats so beat frequency is a difference of the frequency the real resultant of these two is a sound of frequency equal to uh, equal to average frequency and amplitude varying with frequency equal to difference in frequency this is only one statement we understand that's the key part of beats now we'll come to this mathematical expression okay what is mathematical is there are two oscillations and we are talking at a particular point so we have already substituted x so x term is not there so one per the two oscillation at a point this is not like we are not using like a traveling wave so this is first oscillation this is the second oscillation reaching a particular point and we have chosen a time when they are in phase similar to previous figure we have chosen a time when they are in phase so what is the resultant oscillation resultant oscillation will be sum of these two resultant oscillation so what will be the value of y at a particular value of t what is the value of y at a particular value of t will be equal to sum of y1 at particular t and y2 at particular value of t so this is some this is resultant this is principle of superposition and if you look at this term what is this term equal to this is equal to sin c plus sin d this expression if we take a common it is equal to sin c plus sin d the uh, sorry sin c plus sin d So sin c plus sin d is becomes equal to two sin c plus d by two into cos c minus d by two. So this is the expression we get here. We are just simply use sin c plus sin d formula. Okay, and this is what we get here. Let's say uh, uh, this one term here and the two. Okay, this is the expression we get here. Let's try and understand what this expression imply. Okay, so uh, I have used a term called average for this term. Does the average make sense? So the same expression: two a sine of two pi, average frequency into t, average is f one plus f two by t, and I have used delta f equal to difference in frequency. So this becomes equal to two a sine of two pi. But this becomes average frequency, and this becomes half of difference in frequency. So this is the expression here, and when I look at this, will be very large, and this will be small. And so this is large. This term is oscillating with large frequency, and this term is oscillating with very. This is changing very slowly, and this is changing very quickly. So this term is one way, another way to interpret. If you recall the previous graph here, so we can also think of this term here. This term is like an amplitude. And you can see whenever two frequencies are there, if we overlap small, it becomes like an SHM equation. This is in this term gets the frequency of oscillation. This is an amplitude. In case of standing wave, amplitude depended on position. Here, amplitude depends on time. It varies with time. it varies with time so this amplitude is different value of amplitude at different time okay so this is amplitude varying and since uh, amplitude varying as a cos function amplitude is varying in a periodic fashion and what is the frequency here frequency is delta f by 2 but when we talk about we are not interested in amplitude but most of the time what is more relevant is intensity the square of amplitude if this frequency is delta f by 2 amplitude what is the frequency of square of amplitude you know the frequency of square of a sine function becomes twice of that so which means amplitude is varying with the frequency is equal to difference in frequency by 2 intensity will vary equal to frequency equal to delta f so in an oscillation of relatively high frequency so it will be an oscillation of relatively high frequency f average with intensity oscillating with the frequency of delta f that's the mathematical expression of what we have seen in case of previous figure that's oscillation 
So what is beats? If two sound waves of nearly equal frequency create sound of frequency equal to average frequency with amplitude varying with frequency, sorry, with not amplitude, with, with intensity varying with frequency equal to difference in frequency. That's how it will sound. It will sound wow, awesome. Yes, Vinesh? Sir, from the graph, can we identify the frequency with which the amplitude varies? Absolutely, easy. I have told also. Now tell me how do you identify frequency from this graph? Now, this like, uh, frequency of the amplitude is like uh, the average of the like difference divided by two, right, sir? Huh? See, see when. Mm -hmm. Can you identify here? See, uh, this point you will hear a large sound. Again, this point also will hear a large sound. See, actually, when you look at this, when we, uh, okay. Uh, this is the time period of variation of intensity. See, what is happening when you plot, where is the amplitude positive, where is the amplitude negative, we cannot figure out from this graph. That's the only problem here. Are you finding what I'm saying now? See, at yes, this sir. expression, we cannot figure out positive and negative. That's a difficult part. It gets inverted and that's not easy to comprehend also. But what we see in terms of, that's why better to think in terms of amplitude. If this is a shape, what is the time interval? What is the least time interval? Uh, what is the time interval between two successive loud notes? Can you find out time period between two successive loud notes? This is the time. And inverse of this is the frequency. Yes, sir. And when would this happen? When this do these two happen? When they become in phase. And if you think of in terms of, if you want to do that, you can do in terms of phaser. I somehow feel phaser are much easier to understand. Though it is, takes a little lengthy, uh, but phaser in terms of, if one phaser is rotating with a frequency of say 404, other is rotating with frequency of 400. How would, what would happen? Try and think of that. And if you have work session, I will again tell that what will happen. What will happen progressively, the angle between two phases will keep on increasing. It is equivalent to, uh, suppose in the circle, two boys are running. If they are running with the same speed, if they start with the same point, uh, they'll always have the same position. And if they start with a different point, if they're running with the same speed in same uh, same angle of velocity, the diff angle between them remain constant. Phase difference will remain constant. But say if one is, if one boy is running so that he completes 400 circles in a second, and this boy completes 404 circles in a second, what will happen to the gap between the two boys who are running the circle? Okay. Angular okay. gap. The so first round gap will be very small. Second round, second oscillation will become slightly larger. Third round becomes slightly larger. By the time you come to 100 round, by the time you come to 100 round, this would have completed exactly 101 round. Again, they'll be together. So what has happened in one fourth of a second, what has happened? Both of them again come together. They are in phase again. So we can understand in that fashion as well. Are you getting some, making some sense? Yes, sir. Hmm. So this is a pervergency. And uh, so in terms of uh, solving question, what we need to keep in mind, this is only the last part what you mentioned, and we'll go in the afternoon session.